A few weeks ago, I started on my most ambitious sim rig build yet. Inspired by my first cup car build, I started on cup car 2.0. And with the monitors finally mounted on the rig, I'm going to show you guys how to set your FOV so it looks less like this and more like this. But this won't be the first time I've showed you guys how to do that. It will be the first time that I've showed you guys how to color tune your GPU so iRacing looks less like this and more like this. But before we get into it, I want to give you guys a quick update on where we're at with Cupcar 2.0. Since you guys last saw the rig, the triple monitor direct mount arrived, and I've been working on the cable management to get everything looking really tight. I used wire loom on every inch of cabling throughout the entire rig, and I 3D printed some clips to hold it all in place. I think it looks amazing, and it's probably the best cable management work I've done yet. The monitor mount looks amazing, and having the triple screens back on the rig is absolutely what I needed to be able to make this video. If you guys missed the beginning of Cupcar 2.0, we're already on the fourth video. You can go back to the start by using the link up top, or you could just wait till the end and click the link at the end. Now with just one thing left to do before I can start designing and printing the interior, Let's go get these monitors set up. All right, guys, from inside the car, you're gonna notice that the dash isn't in the right spot. It actually extends all the way over. Everything's kind of distorted. It doesn't feel like I'm sitting in the cup car. It feels like everything's kind of in all the wrong places. So we're gonna go into the settings. All right, now that I have iRacing loaded up, we're gonna start by tuning some graphics real quick because that is the first thing that I noticed that was off. First off, I don't want virtual mirrors. I want cockpit mirrors, high detail. Medium clouds is fine. I do want a little bit of foliage. Maybe medium detail. To be quite honest, I don't remember all the other settings I had on here, so I'm gonna have to work through those for a bit. I'm gonna go back into the car. I have functional mirrors, but you'll notice that the side wraps around a lot. I'm gonna go to monitors. And I'm just gonna start plugging in all the accurate settings or close to so that it can kind of get me in the ballpark of what I want for the FOV. I'm gonna start with my distance and I believe it's about 24 inches. So that's what I'm gonna input just as a baseline. Now, in order to fix this left or this right side dash right here, if I hit render three projections, you guys will notice I just got way stretched out. So then we can go in here to options, set it with a curved screen, 1500R. Monitor width is about 28. Bezel, I'm actually gonna go negative 0.04. And let's see what that does. And you guys will notice now the dash isn't wrapped around the side. I've got the full car in front of me, but the rest of the perspective is still a bit off. And for that, we'll go back into monitors. Go to the three flat screens, angle between the screens. And once I got to a good baseline where everything was wrapped around me, it just became about making the micro adjustments and little tweaks to the settings until it felt like I was really like I had the proper FOV and the POV video was going to look right. All right, guys, so after some tweaks, I've got a pretty good initial base. You can see the dash is in a better spot. Doesn't wrap all the way around the monitor. I can now see the passenger side mirror. And let me show you the settings I landed on for that after doing some tweaks. So it's kind of funny when you have curved monitors, you have to use both sets of settings. So in the curved monitor settings, I had to go set my radius to 1500R. Obviously, I still set the monitor size, render three images, all that stuff. And the viewing distance from the monitors, which is probably a little bit off, but we adjusted that through other tweaks. And then once all that's set, I go into three flat screens and I have to give the angle between the monitors. The viewing distance obviously is still the same. Monitor width is still the same, but without giving the angle, it's never gonna properly wrap around like it's supposed to. So those are kind of the steps that I went through. And I basically just adjusted, as you guys saw, I was adjusting each individual setting until things kind of fell into place. And it leaves you with what I think is a pretty good field of view. Now, 
I could probably dial this in a little more. I want to adjust the monitors a little bit and do a little bit more with it. But what I wanted to do with this was just give you guys an idea of how to get your FOV set right. And it's going to be a little bit different for everybody. The settings aren't always going to be the same. But as you can see, making those simple little tweaks in rendering three images definitely helps to get everything aligned. And now when I'm sitting in front of the dash, you can see the alignment is better. The screen's where it should be, and you can see it through the middle of the wheel, and it looks a lot better. Now let's talk about making iRacing look better. Now for those of you that have been wondering for a while why iRacing looks so much more like a cartoon on your rig and not on the ones you see on the video, it's because you need to color tune your GPU for iRacing. Now I run an AMD RX 7900 XTX graphics card, so I'll be tuning in the AMD software, but if you have Nvidia, I believe you also have the option to do this. Now the main problem with iRacing is the color is really warm, and what you need is a cooler tone to balance it out. So in the AMD software, if you go to games and then into your game settings under display, you'll want to activate the custom color option. And we're going to tune each individual monitor so it looks a lot better. Starting at the middle monitor, I'm going to go down to the color temperature and I'm going to take it from the base 6500 all the way up to 7800. And then I'm going to do the same for the other two monitors. Now the next problem can be brightness, especially for me. I know it's way too bright and I want to add a little bit of depth and also make it look a little bit more natural. So I'm gonna lower the brightness to negative 14. Now in keeping of the theme of trying to make it look natural, I'm gonna take the saturation down to 79 and the contrast down to 90. And with those changes, you'll notice it looks a lot more realistic than it did before. Now this last part's a bit subtle and it's not really necessary, but I've found that adjusting the hue just slightly adds just a touch of better quality to the image. That's just me personally, depending on your monitor, it may not help. Now with the current GoPro settings and all the light in the room, it might be kind of hard to tell how much of a difference those adjustments made. But if I cut back to Cup Car 1.0, you can see from the interior on the same track how much of an impact color tuning can have on the overall POV of your video. And also, for you personally sitting behind the wheel, how it actually looks more natural. Now if you guys aren't aware, there is also an FOV calculator out there. So if you get your angles just right on your monitors and everything, you can use that. I personally don't because I prefer to have a little bit of a different angle for both my monitors and it comes down to just making small tweaks and adjustments until it's right where I need it. Usually it comes in pretty close to what the FLV calculator would have been anyways, but just making those tweaks and stuff and getting it exactly right. And I still have a few tweaks I'm going to do, but ultimately we got it really close. It looks really good and I'm happy with it and I think I'm ready to start building the rest of the Cup Car 2.0 build. If you guys haven't had a chance to check it out, thirdwheelexclusive.com is up and running. You could head over there, check out merch, and check out our sponsors. Or you can also go support our sponsors by checking out the description. Let me know how psyched you guys are to start designing and building this rig. It's the community build, as I always tell you. I love to hear your feedback and ideas. If you guys have them, drop them in the comments. Make sure you hit that subscribe button, ring the bell, and until next time, I'll see you guys out on the track.